Good morning. I want to bring up a few things from the Psalms this morning about the courtroom language. Um, I found a couple of interesting things. In Psalm 50, 21, God says, I will set in order, and he's talking about the wicked. Let me read that to you. Psalm 50, 21. He's, taught, he's doing this whole several verses here. Um, you know, he's talking to his people, but they've been acting wickedly. He says, to the wicked, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? He's rebuking Israel. And then God, this is God speaking. He says, um, you hate instruction. Give your mouth to evil. Um, you sit and speak against your brother. And in verse 21, he says, These things you've done, and I've kept silent, and you thought I was altogether like you. But I will rebuke you and set in order before your eyes. I will set, and, and there's a, uh, in the English version of my Bible here, it says, and set them in order before your eyes. It really doesn't make any sense in English, but it, that word is, in Hebrew, arach, and it means to set in order, to arrange, and it's and then one of the other meanings down the line here is set forth a royal a loyal a legal case. I'm sorry, it's to set forth a legal case. And it's the same word that we that is in Job thirteen eighteen, which we mentioned yesterday. Um, says, see now I have prepared my case. This is Job speaking. He has prepared his case, and it's the same word. I've set in order my case. I know that I shall be vindicated. You know, and we talked about how much legal language there is in Job, in the book of Job. So this is that same word that now David uses. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not David, it's Asaph in Psalm 50. Asaph uses to say, God says, I've kept silent. You thought I was altogether like you. But I will rebuke you, and I will set forth my legal case before your eyes. So... That's pretty interesting. Um, this also used in 2 Samuel 23, 5. I like this, too, uh, in the sense of a legal case. It says, this is David's final song. These are the last words of David in 2 Samuel 23. And he's talking about the Spirit of the Lord. His word was on my tongue. Remember that passage. And he's saying, the rock of Israel spoke to me. And he's like... Although my house is not so with God, this is verse 5 of 2 Samuel 23, he's made me, you know, he's just talking about the greatness that God's given him, although his house was not so big. And it says, He has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. This is my salvation and my desire. Okay, but... He said he has made an everlasting covenant with me and ordered, it's ordered in all things and secured. That's that same word. He has arranged in order. He has set forth things so such that it is like a legal case. It has a legal standing. So David used this word in his, in his uh, song, his final words, to say God's covenant with me is such that it's a legal case. I like that. Now, you know, I looked at several Psalms this morning. In 62, verse 2 and verse 6, David is saying, God is my defense. He says it twice. God is my defense. God is my defense. That's a legal courtroom word. And then in verse 12, he says, You render to each one according to his work. Now, we're living under grace, and we don't like to talk about works, but... Jesus also said in Revelation 2 and in Revelation 22, I will reward you according to your work. According to your works, it says in, in uh, Revelation 22. Um, and, and I also found something else I want to bring. 66, Psalm 66, 18, David says, If I regard, let me make sure that's David, I think it is. No, we don't know. It says, to the chief musician, a psalm, a psalm. We don't know if this is David for sure. Probably is, though. Because he really, we think he wrote most of the first psalms before you get to, oh, I forgot, I think it's 90 or something. Anyway, he says, the writer of the psalm says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Now, 
Does that sound like 1 John 7, 1, 7 to 9, where it says, if we say we have no sin, um, we lie. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us, so that we've talked about that. I just think that's interesting. I hadn't noticed that that's exactly what the psalmist said in Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. And again, I'm going back to why are we looking at the courts of heaven? Because if there is isn't a place where we're not receiving, receiving an answer to our prayers, it could be that it's our unconfessed sin or the unconfessed sin of our ancestors, our fathers, our father's fathers, meaning the whole family, not just our fathers. So that's that. Um, I just want to encourage you. We're, we're just looking into this stuff. And um, I want to know the whole counsel of God, and I know you do too. And so as we look at the Psalms, at Job, um, look through the things in the Scriptures, and Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. Um, uh, we saw where he explained himself in Luke 24. It says he, he explained himself by the Psalms and the prophets and the writings of Moses. So Jesus did not come and abolish the old scriptures. I like to call them the old scriptures because they're actually, I think, at least five covenants in the old scriptures. And we say, oh, well, the old covenants, the old scriptures, the Old Testament, that's over. It's not. Jesus came to fulfill it. The only thing that changed is the Levitic Levitical priesthood under Moses. Ah, that's a whole other subject. But anyway, bless you. Just want to bring that today.